What's up everyone, here we are back into analyze my trades for the week and go through those. So we've got my NRL fantasy analysis squad and then the alternates as well. And that alternates is looking uh, looking a bit shaky at the moment, There's a few out in that one. But I got pretty lucky in the, in my team here, only you have to deal with Paps uh, injury. So at this stage, we're not sure if it's gonna be one week, two weeks, any longer than that. It sounds like it should be a max two weeks and he'll be pushing to try and play next week. But again, there's no, I feel like for him, there's no rush in, in bringing him back. But if you're someone that's dealing with, you know, three injuries, uh, th sorry, three outs in like a Latrell, Mom, and Pap, I'd say Latrell's the one you'd want to be at least getting out. And then if you've got enough cover, I'd be trying to hold the other two, which you'll see in my alternates I'm, I'm going to be trying to do. Um, but if you don't have cover, you might have to get rid of one of them there. And, you know, the question will be, do you hold mom or do you hold pap? And and I guess your theory is going to come into the fact of, is he going to be playing origin? Do you think, will he be you know missing this next two or so weeks? And then he's going to miss a bunch over the origin period too. Whereas mom, you know, is he going to get his spot back when he comes back? So there's a few things to think about there, but in my team, unfortunately did have to make the one trade. I was hoping to, to not be able to, but so I did not have to, but with pap being out, I don't have, didn't have any cover in the center or wing fullback. So unfortunately I had to do it guys. It really pains me to do it. One good thing is he does play for my team, so I can actually watch him hopefully do well. And that is young Benny Hampton. <laughs> I can't believe I did it. And did it like 80K higher too. But, you know, with, with Benny, he's, he's going to cover the center in the wing fullback for me. And we'll go through his pros and cons. We'll start with the cons. So there's a chance that he doesn't keep up his scoring, as he is. Obviously, a 50 and a 46 is pretty strong in the last couple of weeks. They did win the games, though, so... You know, if they're, they're going back to playing against who we got, the Raiders. So the Raiders haven't been great, but you'd expect them to, to put up more of a fight than than what, uh, you know, the Dogs did or, you know, even the Tigers the week before. So there's a chance that he doesn't score as well. But again, if I'm using it as cover, I'm going straight to the pros. If I'm using it as cover, somewhere in the 30s would be pretty cool. You know, having a half in the, in the wing fullback position or the center position is going to be helpful there. Uh, what's the other con? The other con would be that he loses his spot after a few weeks. My thoughts are that he won't, just with the fact that they've actually won since he's been playing in the starting side and Jake Clifford's going to the night soon and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's the other sort of con there. But the pro is that he, he keeps scoring between 40 and 50, right? If he does that, I then have someone that can score really well in my centers, especially, um, but can cover the wing fullback as well. And I think this week, I just didn't want to make two trades. I, you know, I could avoid Hampton and, and you know, trade a pap or upgrade someone else in the squad, but I'm really happy with, you know, fairly happy with how everyone's going in the moment. I feel like I just want to make the one trade, have my cover for the next bunch of weeks, hopefully. If he can make some extra cash as well during that time, then I can move him on before the round 13 buy. And that's the only other annoying thing is he doesn't play that round 13. But if we can have him as a someone that makes about 100K and covers, you know, center and wing fullback for me, especially covering Pap over the next few weeks, and I don't have to worry about him. He's not like he's, you know, Jason Saab, or I've seen, you know, other people having... Obviously, Simonson's not playing, but those types of players there, um, Remus Smith, these types of guys that are okay. Uh, at least Hampton's actually scoring pretty well. So that's what I that's what I decided to do in this squad. But I'm really happy with how the team's made up at the moment, and that's why I decided to go just the one. So Turpin is a slight worry at this stage, but for me, if he can still get sort of 60, 65 minutes, even if they move him, you know, even if Levi comes on a bit earlier and Turpin stays on, if they can do that and he can play that 60, 65 minutes, and have more energy and maybe do a few run more runs at a dummy half. He might be able to score a bit better in that time. Somewhere around that, you know, high 40s to 50, I'll be able to take at this point. Um, but he he might be someone that has to be moved on sooner than later if he doesn't get you know more than 60 minutes, for example. Uh, we got Welsh Watson and Harris in there with Crichton and Fafita. So I'm really happy with my middle and edge at the moment. And I've got a bit of cover there in, in Alvaro Utukamanu. Um, Schuster can go into an edge, for example. So Really happy with the setup in terms of my mids and my edges. At this stage, we move to our halves. We've got Cleary as captain. Happy days. We've got Schuster. we got Fogarty. And we have Walker as well. So plenty of cover there. Centers I now have cover with Hampton. Obviously, if there's an injury next week and perhaps not back, then I don't have cover. But surely, one week. We can get through one week. Um, but Tommy Opacek is playing really well. And Marnie, you'd expect to, have, expect to score better than 13. So that would be good. But Hampton, Laurie, and Roger down the bottom. I'm happy with that. And then I've still got plenty of money makers on the bench there with, you know, Bradley killing it. Foggs is, uh, you know, 
had a few up and down weeks, and hopefully he's, you know, this is going to be his floor in terms of money making. He'll be able to score a lot better. Alvaro making money and playing him as a scorer. Simkin, uh, Stefano there. Sammy Walker. Spencer's not really making me any money anymore, but he could be someone I can just sit there and hold at this stage. And then Pat when he comes back. So really happy with how the team's looking. 25 trades remaining, so that means I am now will have banked three, which is not incredible, but not the worst thing either. So 55k remaining, sitting at 1,557 in my overall rank. I'm really happy with where the team's at. Um, yeah, so unfortunately I had to make the one trade this week, but I think that's the smartest option rather than trying to make two and you know, forcing uh, f forcing trading Turpin this week when you don't need to. He's got his break even's fairly low. Um, and there's no one else you'd really trade in this side, like Spencer or something, but who am I going to get? I'm going to trade him for Curran or something just, just for the sake of it. You know, he might score pretty well this week, but I already have enough guys that are going to score, yeah, 40 plus. So yeah, that's where we're at this squad. And we'll uh, move on to the alternates now. And guys, if you're enjoying this, please hit like and subscribe. Really appreciate all the support so far. Alternates. So I've made two trades this week and we're down to 26 in total with 105k remaining. And I just did decide to pull the trigger on Brooks this week and and bring in Moses. And, you know, I've been high on Moses this week, especially. So I felt like I, you know, I couldn't give all the advice for everyone off to take, pick him up and then not do it, not do it myself. But, you know, priced at 684, which puts him just under, you know, around that 50 point average. When I think he's going to be a 55 to 60 point player, especially if the Eels keep playing well. So I thought that was really cool. And then I've decided to bring in Joshy Curran and someone else I've been really high on. And I'm like, in the alternates, I can make, I can take these risks. And, and this is going to be a really good lesson to learn as to how it goes. It could pay off really well and he can make a couple hundred K or he could be on the bench or out in the next few weeks. So I said, I like him as a player and it'd be nice to actually watch that game on the weekend and have him in the, in this squad. Um, you know, one that's going to make a few more, uh, take a few more risks in the alternates, especially when I'm ranked 7,100 at the moment. I feel like a few risks would be ideal at this stage going forward. So there we are with that one. Not great in terms of the buy period for, for Joshy, but I think for him, you're, you're looking to to get some good scores over the next bunch of weeks and some price rises there, and then I can move him on to someone a bit later. Uh, but, you know, with Mom and Pap out this week, I've decided to hold both at this stage. Can play Avrilo in the centres. I've got Teddy Laurie and To'o at the bottom there, so happy with that. And then the question is just going to be, who am I going to captain this week? I'm, I'd be tempted to captain Moses. I feel like Fafita is still pretty safe. I could go Braley, you could go McCulloch again. Um, but yeah. I know the team looks like it's crazy what happens in one week. You lose Pat Mom, you start having to play Avrilo, you start having to play, you know, you're playing Stefano a few weeks in a row and yeah, the interchange looks fairly good now, but I feel like eventually it might be smart to move on a Terp so that I can you know, I've already got three hookers on the bench there. So to shore up some other positions and I'd obviously like to have two strong halves, I'd like to to have Stefano on the bench and actually have another gun mid in there, for example. You know, like my my team there with what have I got? Tohu, Welch, Crichton, and Fafita. I'm just missing that one that one gun, I think, in that middle slash edge position. Uh centers are okay, obviously with Mom and Rapana. And the wing fullback's okay. So probably that's just that half and the uh and the mid there that I can shore up a little bit, and then hopefully we can score a lot better going forward. But there you go, guys. That's the uh, that's the two teams for the week, and we'll get into the people squad after this one. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one, guys.